And so why do you think that that happens more in the United States? Because it's the ultimate consumer society and the consumer philosophy only makes sense if you don't die. The continual acquiring of more only makes sense if you don't die. If you didn't die, then saving your money, making money, getting rich, buying land, all that stuff, doing that and doing more and more and more, it's called greed, doing more and more, would make perfect sense if we never died. Right. But that kind of greed is also, it's part of filling that emptiness from birth and it's part of filling that emptiness the death represents. Right. Yeah? Uh -huh. So more, more, more. I mean, the one word I don't think I've ever heard anyone in America use in 18 years, or the phrase I've never heard is, I have enough. Enough is not a concept in America. Uh -huh. Just like small is not a concept. Uh -huh. Nothing is small. The smallest thing is called regular. <laughs> <clears throat> By definition, if it's the smallest thing, it's not regular. It's the smallest. Yeah. So we avoid stuff in this in our consumer mentality. All sorts of things get pushed away because they challenge the fundamental ideas of consumerism, uh -huh. which comes down to profit and security. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna die. Sorry. Yeah. Get over it. Now deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then sandwiched in between these, these extremes, these, you know, sources of emptiness yeah. is sex. And sex is an interesting phenomenon because it's used, you know, the, the whole idea is kind of colonized and, um, and used for the benefit of consumerism in so many ways within this culture. Yeah. I wonder how you, how you see that happening. Again, it's a disaster. Start with... I don't know. I mean, okay, start with when I came to America 18 years, <clears throat> excuse me, 18 years ago, uh, which was 1992, I had the distinct experience that I'd gotten into a time capsule or a time machine and, and gone 30 years back in time when it came to sex and relationships in this country. It was just staggering. I felt like I'd arrived in the 50s. Will you start <clears throat> out by telling... Um, talking about your experience in Australia, your sort of sexual development in Well, sex, sex and, and I'm now 18 years out of date. I mean, I go back and visit, but I'm not that participatory in Australian society anymore. Uh -huh. In fact, I'm very Americanized, and when I go back, they think I'm an American, uh -huh. um, which doesn't get me free beers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then I tell them I chose to live here, and they kind of move away from me on the bench. <laughs> they literally go, are you crazy? Why would you do that? No. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm crazy. I, yeah. This is the biggest asylum in the world, so why not live in it? Wow. <laughs> it is. I used to work in psychiatric hospitals. And when I came to America, I was here for a young diverting. But when I came here, I'd been here for a year. I was walking down Venice Boulevard in Los Angeles and it hit me this revelation, I just stopped and went, I get it, I get it. I'm in a psychiatric center with 300 million patients <laughs> and my job is to find the staff because everything that's been happening for a year, not everything, a huge amount of what's happened in the last year is crazy, uh -huh. yeah, which can be fun because it opens up huge creativity and it opens up huge possibility man, there's a high price to crazy. Yeah. And we see it in our politics, which is crazy. American, American friends have often phrased that simply as, <clears throat> what's the difference in relationships, like personal one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. uh, partnership sexual relationships? Yeah. And I say, well, for a start, in Australia, men and women like each other. We like each other. We have friends of the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. Go-to people. Everyone I know in Australia some of their friends, every man or woman I know in Australia, some of their friends are men and some are women. We don't have the war going on that's going on here between the sexes. We don't have the power trips. We don't have the abuse trips. I mean, I'm not saying everyone. That stuff exists, but it's not the culture. Yeah? The culture here is such that, I mean, how many couples do you know have been together for more than two years 
who can honestly look you in the eye and say, we're really good friends. We love each other as friends. We're on each other's side. Uh -huh. really. Percentage of couples All, that yes, I know is yes. probably around 50%. Okay, that's huge. Yeah, I, I, I right? appreciate that's, that. And, I and congratulations for choosing to set the bar there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of when you when you set the bar there for yourself and the people in your life, what you're doing is choosing to let all let go of all the BS drama mm -hmm. that gets put on film on television as reality. Right. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's dysfunctional reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen a healthy reality show yet that I can think of off the top of my head, except maybe Big Cat Diary. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's these guys who, or this BBC team who film big cats in Africa and follow okay. their lives. <laughs> it's <Right>. fascinating. <laughs> <coughs> That's healthy functional reality. Uh -huh. But there's very little of it. And even the news has been polluted with drama, mm -hmm. you know. It's the same stuff. Mm -hmm. It just denigrates relationships. And, it, and how do you have good sex if you haven't, aren't having good relationships? Right, right. And good relationships start with learning to create a good relationship with yourself, mm -hmm. yeah, and doing something about this relationship. You can't have a better relationship with someone else than you are having with yourself, mm -hmm. by definition. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that that's a really good point. And, and I wonder what you think about the way that we... Um, perceive our own bodies and how that oh with disgust and loathing mm -hmm. I have no doubt about that I mean I'm surrounded by college students here who talk to me <laughs> you were one of them years ago a yeah. few years back very few people feel comfortable about their bodies which yeah. is why 99% of the sex that that happens in the student population happens drunk that's part of it uh -huh. sex is judged I mean good sex in America is referred to as nasty I'm sorry, in the English language, nasty don't mean good. Mm -hmm. You come up to me and say, hey, I got some nasty food for you to eat. I'm not excited. <laughs> you come up to me and say, do you want some nasty sex? No, thank you. I'd rather have some spectacular sex. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking about nasty as like slang? Yeah, but there's no accident in the words we choose. Uh -huh. There's something wrong with having good sex in America. You're not supposed to. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I saw that's so vastly different with Australia, I'm sort of answering four questions no, at no, once please, here. please continue. Is that we didn't have that Puritan history. Mm -hmm. And the Puritanism here, oh my God. I mean, <clears throat> butt cracks. The top inch of a butt crack is still pixelated on television. Apparently something I don't know what it'll do to us if we see it but apparently it's bad for us and flipping the bird is pixelated forget nudity about the only place you get nudity is on on pay-per-view stations like HBO mm -hmm. but even cable not even mainstream network television just cable there's no nudity yeah Europe England Australia I can definitely say 30 35 years ago had full frontal nudity on television. It's just not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here you'd end up in, I mean, think of the drama over Janet Jackson's wardrobe malfunction. It's a tip. Guess what? Every woman gets born with two or more, <laughs> you know, usually two. Yeah, it's just a brass. What's the big deal? The big deal is that it's got to be hidden because it's sinful and wrong and... I mean, come on, there's your answer. Janet Jackson's wardrobe malfunction is the answer to your question about American body image. Yeah. Culturally. Mm -hmm. Culturally, right? Right. So that Puritan thing's just so strong. 